Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. This morning's Mass we offer for the repose of the souls of um, uh, so, repose of the soul of Umberto Perzina and for the intentions of Julia Thrasher. And today the, the church celebrates the feast of St. Padre Pio. It's, in the book it says St. Pius of Pietrosina, but I don't think I can pronounce that. <laughs> and so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy, Grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or else he will rebuke you, and you will be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal, and profane the name of my God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for our feet. The Lord exists forever. Your word is firmly fixed in heaven. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. 
and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So yesterday, um, I was doing a long meandering thing about um, Moses for a bit. And one of those bits about Moses is that he has a mission, but he's happy to share it. Um, he doesn't say, I am Moses, I am the one who led you out of Israel, uh, led, you out of, led you out of captivity into the promised land, and, you know, therefore pay homage to me. He has the exact opposite attitude. But what was so interesting is that all the people around him were accusing him of having that attitude. And it was like, what makes you think you're so special? And he's like, I don't. <laughs> and the tragedy of Moses' life is that what the accusations were against him were so opposite to his personality, and yet the down, his downfall was that he got so stressed out because he couldn't handle all the people constantly, constantly bickering at him. And he eventually just snapped and just said, ah! And then he manifested a lack of tenderness, and God says, that's it. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> but one of the other ways in which he, because this is important, by the way, it's sad for Moses, but sometimes it's nice to watch your heroes fail. <laughs> it's really important I say this part. <laughs> I almost neglected to say it. You have to watch your heroes fail. Now, why? Because then they become idols. This is something we as Catholics do all the time. Well, Father said... Because then, after a while, then Father does something stupid. <laughs> and then we think, how could he do wrong? It's like, he's human. It's a precept of our faith that every single human being you will meet in this life is a sinner. And, this is really terrifying, the better they are, the more dangerous they will become. Because, as I was trying to say yesterday, they will sometimes be like this, the great saints will stand so head, a sh head and shoulders above us that we will then just start saying, well, this sounds crazy, but you find it in St. Irenaeus, so okay. <laughs> you know, like, and by the way, theologians have been doing that for centuries. Generally speaking, Irenaeus is head and shoulders above any theologian that has come 1,900 years after him. But he's still, and he would say this, well, he wouldn't say it, but he's just a dude. And even though the Pope is the Pope, he's just a dude. It's the work of God around them that sanctifies. And so, Jesus does something amazing here. Knowing that his disciples are flawed individuals, he knows more than the disciples themselves. Sends them out to do the exact same job he's been doing. This is, if you really reflect on it, <laughs> and I mean this with all holy reverence, insane. <laughs> Especially if you've ever led something or governed something and you're terrified of people screwing it up, what do you do? You micromanage and you make everything your own. Oh, my, they might screw that up. Oh, they might screw that up. Oh, they might screw that up. Well, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. By the way, that's one of the ways in which good people... That's why you have to have a Sabbath. That's why you need to have a time of rest. Because the world doesn't depend on you. It will go on after you die. And uh, that park bench that commemorates your existence will fall into nothing. And that cemetery gravestone, after a generation or two, will become moss-ridden and we will be forgotten. But not by God. 
but not by God. So he sends the 12 out as the first phase because Jesus, like Moses, who came before him and in another sense after him, wants us to share in his mission. So go and forgive sins. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Um, the forgive sins actually happens later, but cast out demons and heal the sick. And if Jesus was a simple wonder worker, you know, a, 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 parlor, a parlor magician, he would want scarcity in those miracles. He would want to be able to say, this is my turf. And you see this sometimes either in parishes or in uh, you know, parlor shows or all this other thing, where if you know that somebody else can do your job, right? That same thing that we fear about death, that we're replaceable, because we are. <laughs> um, it's the same problem that we have in a community. We want to prop ourselves up and simultaneously tear people down so that we can kind of keep our dignity and our role. Jesus says, yeah, that's not who I am. I work signs and wonders great, but I want to share that with you. There's only one thing that he can't share, and that is his identity as the co-eternal son. Everything else, he wants to share it away. His power, his glory, everything about who it, what it means to be the Son of God, Jesus does not care one bit about hoarding it for himself. He wants us to share in it. We have been created in his image. He wants us, and you see this in the prayers, especially for a funeral. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages. Think about that for a moment and let that blow your mind. This is, by the way, something that the church fathers talked about all the time. They called it theosis, becoming like God. Oh, both microphones. There it goes. That's better. <laughs> It means being like God. And you know what we as Catholics want to do? And this is not wrong, by the way, but it requires greater dimension. We just want to go to heaven and get rewarded for the good things we've done in life. Do you see the discrepancy? Now, it's not wrong to say I want to go to heaven because what does heaven mean? <laughs> being in the presence of God. But in order to be in God's presence, you must be like him. It would be like a single bead of honey <laughs> being washed away by a tidal wave of an ocean. You need to be strengthened, built up, so that you're not lost in that tidal wave. And so oftentimes, God spends just as much time holding himself back from us as he does from giving himself to us. And it's not because he doesn't want to. It's not like he's that withholding parent that says, unless you do everything that I say, I won't give it to you, which is just manipulation. He's like, if I give you <laughs> that giant <laughs> stone of gold, it will crush you. <laughs> That's the thing about gold. It's heavy. God's like, here. And then it's like a cartoon where you just get crushed under it. So he wants us to be strengthened. And this then leads us to the great paradox of a guy like Padre Pio, who's famous for, like, if there's a kind of miracle that can be done, he did it. He's famous for um, healing sick people. He's done the stigmata. But you know, he doesn't do the stigmata. He had the stigmata. He had the, the wounds on his hands and on his side. He would heal the sick. He would spend long hours in the confessional. Um, there's even one amazing story that when it, because he died in 1968, I think 68 or 62, um, there's a dude flying a plane and his plane is going down. Padre Pio blesses him, bilocates, blesses the dude, and then says, who was this guy? And he finds out it was Padre Pio, and Padre Pio knew the guy. <laughs> like, it wasn't just like this guy is falling down, and he's like, I think this guy's Padre Pio. And he finds him, and Padre Pio's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw you. <laughs> just like, what? It's just absolutely.
absolutely nuts. And then we start thinking, it's like, well, why aren't all of our priests like that? I'll tell you why. We can't handle it. You know what would happen if I, all of a sudden, when I would start anointing the sick, everybody would start getting better? You know, they're lying on their deathbed, and then I go and visit, and I do the anointing of the sick, and then that person's like, whoo, that's great. Oh, that feels really good, Father. Thank you very much. I'm going to get out of here now. They just walk out. What would start happening? All of a sudden, the Comox Valley record will start saying, apparently there's a miracle priest in the Comox Valley. So then all of a sudden, people just start showing up at the door. And you might think, well, that'd be great to have so many people coming to church. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not coming to church. <laughs> this, this is the tragedy. They're not coming for Jesus. They're coming for the miracle. And then here's the other danger. This head, which is already rather big, starts expanding Pride, arrogance, we're better than the other ones. And then one of our parishioners then goes down to St. George's downtown and says, our priest can heal the sick. And then Ryan, is the, the pastor, Reverend Ryan, would just be like, that guy's a jerk. <laughs> and then it starts a fight, and then there's tensions. And then, highly likely, um, I would grow increasingly arrogant and conceited. And then what usually happens is then I start fighting with the bishop. And then after I start fighting with the bishop because he tells me to dial it back a little bit, then I start creating my own little parish. And then I start teaching things that are different than the actual Catholic faith. And then, boom. And this happens all the time all the time. If ever you come across a great speaker, wonder worker, miracle guy, and he starts saying, oh, well, you know, I'm, I no longer need my bishop. I no longer need the pope. I no longer need the communion of the faithful. I'm going to do it on my own. Run. Run. Because the bubbles of hell will be right behind him. And it's funny, um, you can find this warning in the book of Proverbs. Remove from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither property, oh sorry, poverty or riches. Feed me with the food that I need. Or I shall be full and deny you. <sighs> Isn't that amazing? This wasn't hidden in some esoteric, hidden mystery secret where some guy has a vision and says, God told me this thing. It's like, no, it's right there. It was in your daily missalette. A profound wisdom that can have a transformative effect in the church if we just lived it. We just lived it. And I go all the way back to that old principle of theosis. Do we see what we are given on this altar as the most valuable reality in our lives? Now, this is why God hides. If God revealed his glory in the Eucharist, we would have the exact same problem. Crowds of people coming in and we wouldn't be able to handle it. So what does Jesus do? He hides from our gaze so that we can gradually learn to long for him and not for his power. Can you imagine the loneliness of God in this regard? He's like the rich uncle that's always asked for money. Give me this, 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 give me this. I want to be able to work miracles. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. 
And then there's one dude in the 1960s that says, I want to share in your cross. And God says, you get all the gifts because you wanted me. Why do we not have great saints and a reform of church life? A renewal that would change the world and help the poor? At least the way I see it, the answer is simple. I'm not ready for it. And God wants to give it. He wants to give it to a child who actually wants to be his disciple. So I'm not going to start by bilocating to a dude on a crashing plane. Be kind to the person next to you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings of our service placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed pious be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that, released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gary our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, St. Padre Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn through the example of blessed Padre Pio to seek you always and above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man through Christ our Lord. Just as a small excursus, but it's important to know that after Padre Pio started manifesting all these miracles, then you can imagine what happened. <laughs> the hammer came down, and it came down pretty hard. And then he did his greatest miracle of all. He stayed humble and faithful and a part of the church. That was the most difficult miracle for him to accomplish. Healing sick people, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> compared to how hard that is. And uh, you guys got to do that every day. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>